Hi, I'm Paul. And this is The Golf Show. On The Golf Show this week, the dress code debate raises its ugly head yet again. Chris Hansen demonstrates his favourite putting drill. And we look at the options for junior club fitting. Here on The Golf Show, no topic is out of bounds. And just in episode two, we're going to dive into the deep end of something that's very quickly become controversial and very divisive. And that's the hoodie. There's a replace for hoodies in golf at the weekend. We had Tyrrell Hatton winning the BMW PGA at Wentworth, the flagship event of the European Tour, wearing a hoodie. He wore hoodies all week. It was one of the ladies' majors, the KPMG in the States, and a lot of the Adidas athletes there were wearing them. On social media, there's been a massive outcry. Some of the posts people are putting out, they get five and 600 comments. There was a picture of a club that had informed its members on Sunday night that hoodies weren't suitable attire. And lots of the comments were, well, let's just boycott this place. You know, is it going to encourage youngsters into the game? Is it going to do anything for golf's stuffy perception for those that don't play? I put some posts on the Golf Show official Instagram pages and some of the comments I got back were, save it for the football terraces. Well, I don't feel like I'm going to a football match dressed like this. Now, the pros have been wearing these on the tour for a little while. Tony Fee now, probably for the last two years. You know, then you've seen the likes of Justin Thomas wearing his Ralph Lauren ones. And obviously Adidas are going for it now. I remember seeing Justin Timberlake playing in the Alfred Dunhill wearing a hoodie on the old course at St Andrews last year. You know, did that cause any controversy? No, it didn't. I thought it looked pretty cool. You know, what would have happened in the 70s when the likes of Gene Archer and Lee Trevino started wearing baseball caps for the first time? I wonder if there was such a huge outcry then, because that was very different. You know, if you look at what Tom Morris wore 120 years ago with the tweed and the tie, and then fast forward to Arnold Palmer in the 50s with his cardigans and open collar shirts, or then Ian Poulter in the, in the 2000s wearing his brightly coloured clothing. You know, golf has to evolve. I don't see, you know, the 140 years that's passed from Tom Morris to Tyrrell Hatton you know, as this being a revolution. I think it's evolution and I think it's good for the game. But I'd love to hear your comments. I think these are pretty functional. I just did a few shots on it. I didn't even feel there was a hood there. And people clearly want them. When Tyrrell was playing on Sunday, I went online to see if I could buy one to do this review. And uh, they'd all sold out. I must have been on the fourth page of my Google search before I managed to find one reseller that had any in stock. So people clearly want them. So I think the hoodies are coming. I think golfers need to get ready for it. And I think they're gonna be here to stay. Now, if you wanted to buy this hoodie, this Adidas hoodie, as I say, it's the cold ready range. It's 55 pounds. It comes in white, it comes in black, and it comes in this collegiate navy. There are a few things I think you should think about before you buy it. Not the most expensive golf top, but it does feel a little bit cheap, a little bit like a, a fleecy type, type fabric. I've got a feeling it might, it might snag a little bit. But then there's these. The, I've got a real problem with these. These drawstrings, you know, they're great for clipping my microphone on. If I'm playing a shot, you know, it's going to take a while to sort of get used to seeing them there. If you notice the pictures of Tyrrell Hatton on Sunday, his, I think, had been cut off. If you saw the picture of him earlier on the week, we had the white one on, he had, them, he had them tucked in. Then I've got one fundamental issue with this, is when I put it on this morning to do this review, I tried to get these drawstrings nice and straight to sort my OCD out, and obviously you, you kind of do it like that. And in doing that, it's split just there. Now I've popped a stitch in it because I didn't want it to get worse. But when I could see it, it hadn't just split on the stitch, the fabric had torn. There was hardly any, any seam overlap. And the stitching that Adidas had used was like a clear plastic, like a, like a microfiber, the kind of thing that you might, you know, use to hold your um, hems up on your trousers. So, you know, not particularly robust if you're putting this on and off, if you're pulling it, if you're putting your hoodie up. You know, I, I just wonder how long this is gonna last. So I'll wear it for a few rounds. I'll see what comments I get from the members here at Fulford and other places I play. Uh, one of my friends has just gone past the past captain wearing a pair of plus twos. Looked very smart um, and just gave me a wink. So, you know, let's, let's see how we get on. Okay, so here's a really cool drill I like to use. You know, for all the stuff we talked about, aim point and green reading, we set it up so you're using all of a hole, using the full circumference of the hole, all the slopes, you get your left to right, your downhills, your uphills, your right to lefts. Um, and what we call it, it's just called par birdie. So there's eight puts here. You've got three... So you've got four putts at three feet and you've got four putts at six feet. So it's up to you. You can start on a six footer or you can start on a three footer. Your three footers are your par putts. 
and your six footers are your birdie putts. So it's up to you. You can you can you can do this game until you complete every putt, or you can set a challenge where you want to get to four under. So obviously you can start on the six footer, so we'll too much more of them. But this is my first putt for birdie. Okay, so I stayed level par there. Didn't didn't get my birdie. Okay, I'll go to the next one, which is the three foot putt for par. And I managed to save my par. Then you go down to your birdie putt from six feet. We know it's got a, a lot of slope on it already. Okay, made birdie, one under par. Is on. I'm trying to get to four under, so obviously I have to hold a lot of putts to get to that tally. This is for par safe to stay one under par now. Save my par. I've got a chance. Okay, big putt coming up. It's to get me to two under par. Makes it as well. And you can, so you can see how it works. All of a sudden you make a bogey, you drop back to one under, you make a birdie, you get it back. So I think a realistic target is probably four under par. It's quite good. Super simple to set up. Uses the whole green, gets you practicing green reading, gets you practicing on different slopes and um, gets a little bit of pressure involved, which is the key. Today we're filming in Guy Wills' swing studio at Fulford Golf Club. And we're going to talk to PGA professional George Forder about junior clubs. George, thanks for coming on the show. It's all right, no problem, it's a pleasure to be here. When I um, first started playing golf, I started off with a sawn off five iron mm -hmm. with some electrical tape as a grip. But I'm guessing um, there's a lot more options now for, for juniors out there. Tons of options at the moment, to be honest. Um, so you've got the entry level, you've got a little bit higher level. Uh, in terms of entry level, yep. uh, it's all based on height. Okay. So the company we use is US Kids Golf. Yep. Uh, it's a great company. Uh, but you go from all the way from, I think it's 36 inches, all the way up to about 66 or 69 inches. Excellent. So it, it varies between probably age 4 to 18. Brilliant. So that's a good entry level option. And we've yeah. got my son Zach here today. Zach's normally behind the camera, so he's making a rare appearance for us. And we're going to show you how you do a club fitting for these entry level, pretty much budget clubs. US Kids Golf have one of these staffs. Zach, if you could stand next to that place, and George, you could just talk us through what we've got to do. Okay, so we're looking to see the top of Zach's head, and we're going to measure it to whereabouts it says on here. So he is somewhere between 54 and 57. So because Zach is a young lad, he's going to grow, we would expect to go for the one a little bit higher, so we'll go with 57. Gives him a chance to grow into the clubs. He starts growing. And on this pole, George, they're all uh -huh. colour coded. So yep. he's coming to the green uh, band there. What does that mean? So green band, 57 inches. So we, we match it up with the, the colour coded of the shafts. So for example, we have a driver here, which is green. This would be the perfect length for Zach at the height of 57 inches. Perfect. Can I just take that? Okay. Is that yep. you just uh, take a stance in front of the camera and see how that club feels for, for length? That looks perfect. How's that feel, Zach? Good. Yeah. Thank you. So that's that's pretty simple. Um, mm -hmm. What's the retail price on these, George, please? So you're looking driver on its own, it's £35. Yep. Um, so they do a five, five club set with a bag, comes in at 159 so it's it's very reasonable. That's affordable if you just want to try golf out for your children and see if it's a sport for them without having to spend a huge chunk of money. And, and these kind of clubs as well, I did start Zach on these. I think he started with mm -hmm. One of these was down here, then it, then it grew. You know, they do hold their value for if you want to sell them on eBay afterwards and, and upgrade to another set. Now, Zach's been playing golf for, for a few years now. His handicap came down 20 shots last year, which was pretty amazing. So we've got Zach a more advanced set of clubs for juniors. So we've gone for the um, Ping Prodigy range for Zach. And again, there are club fitting options for this, aren't there, George? Certainly are, yeah. So it's a little bit more extensive when it comes to Ping, yeah. And when it comes to juniors, they, they work it on their height and their wrist to floor measurements. Okay, so Zach's height is 147 centimetres. Perfect. And okay. his hand to floor measurement, did we say? Hand to floor is measurement. Is that from the bottom of his fingers? From the wrist. Is that out of the way? From the wrist. So, wrist to floor measurement. So, pop your hands out like this, Zach. Out there. That's it. Okay, so we're talking about 68 centimetres. So, we correlate them to 147 in height. Yep which means he's in the stiff shaft range. 
in terms of length. Um, so their standard golf club, you would add on uh, three quarters of an inch. Fantastic. Okay. And then in terms of lie angle, 68, did you say? Yeah. Lie angle here is pretty standard. Okay. So when it comes to lie angle, lie angle is very important. Um, so if a club is too upright, you tend to see the ball go left. If a ball is too flat, you tend to see the ball go right. So if the lie angle is spot on, we'll get that straight. So that's right. a really simple, clever way that Ping have designed mm -hmm. um, to get the right size club with the right option for your children. For children like Zach, who came down from 54 to 34 handicap last year, what, so, what, what are we talking for a sort of set of these and what are our options? A uh, smaller set for the younger kids. Yep. Uh, for smaller kids, you're looking for five clubs and a bag, 439. Okay. Comes in at. And then you've got the slightly taller children, so like the likes of Zach, you, you need the bigger bag. Yep. Maybe a few more clubs. So again, it starts from 699 for, I believe it's six clubs. And then if you want to move upwards, again, it goes up to 899. When it comes to them growing out of the clubs, uh, they will reshaft all the clubs free of charge. So that, that's a great option. You're getting a, a new shaft, a new grape on your clubs. It's very clever from Ping as well. It's going to build in that brand loyalty to a, a, a club manufacturer that's already really popular out there. Zach, I mean, you're. <laughs> You're really lucky, you're not starting off with an old sawn off second hand fire and you've got a, a cracking set of clubs. So what everyone wants to know is, are you going to come down another 20 shots next year? Uh, well, we'll see, because we've got a lot more tournaments to play. We've got a lot more tournaments next year, so we should see about that. Fantastic. Zach, George, thank you very much for your time. Okay, so after Bryson DeChambeau's US Open victory at the weekend, we're going to try a new feature on the golf show, which is Pro versus Bryson. We've got Daniel Hood, the head PGA Pro from Doncaster Golf Club here, on the first tee, he's got a few members around him, he's done a bit of pressure. We've got track man working, he's done his hair. I think we're good to go. Let's see how Dan's stats compare against Bryson. Straight down the middle, a little bit of a club twirl is always a good sign. Oh, it's good. It's good. 161 ball speed. 61 speed. Bryson's probably get, getting it about 190. Wow. Really? Yeah. Really. Uh, age I first brought part, that's probably one of the trickiest questions there. Um, I didn't get down to scratch till I was 18, so I'm guessing it would have. I reckon, I still reckon 14. Uh, lowest round, I've had nine under twice. Uh, it would have been past 72, so 63, nine under. Uh, Paris National. Hardest course. Paris National. 79, 178 when I ate it good. Has to be pitch marks. Uh, Pre-round meal now is a bacon sandwich. Pre-round meal three years ago was as many carbohydrates as I could fit in me. Mid-round snack, yeah, just normally nuts or flapjack bar or something like that. Post-round drink. Well, now, uh, an alcoholic beverage before um, probably a bottle of water. Uh, this is our market now. Just single dot, any colour next to the number. I would like to say I'm not superstitious, but it's probably a few things what do annoy me. I never used to use a broken tea pick on a par three because someone else had used it, not because of COVID. Someone else had used it and they might have hit a bad shot with it. Um, most nervous moment, probably 2015 to get my toe card. I'd say it was probably short game over time, over years. Hi everyone, it's the Bullet here. Right, I've got a golf quiz question for you. In what year did I graduate to European Tour from Challenge Tour um, after winning the Full Shot Open in China? By the way, it should be illegal making stuff like this. Because it's encouraging people to be fat like me. Oh, I enjoy it, I enjoy it.